Well, good morning. Good morning. It's so great to see every single one of you. We're so glad that you're here to worship Jesus with us, um, to celebrate what he has done in so many people's lives that we're going to see um, testified to this morning. You can go ahead and have a seat where you are. And as you are seated, I will tell you that there is an entire front row down here if you guys would like to come sit if there's anybody that is missing a seat um, you can come join us in the front row over here Uh, you won't get splashed on this side this side's the splash zone but that side won't get splashed so you'll be okay if you'd like to come uh, and if you need a seat please make your way forward well I also want to as I say a word of welcome to all of you in this room I'm looking at the cameras right now and saying good morning to all of you in our overflow space thank you so much uh, for joining with us and even your sacrifice to not be in the exact same space hopefully um, you won't lack any of the Holy Spirit's presence in there he is everywhere so we uh, know that we are worshiping God together and so so thankful uh, that you're here I just want to say a word of welcome especially to all of our guests I see so many of you friends and family they're here to celebrate what God has done in your family members life your daughter son brother any cousin uncle whoever it might be and um, we're so thankful that you are here to see and hear of the stories one of the things we say here at City Church is that the word does the work Um, we preach the word of God And the Word of God is the one that has power. There's nothing special necessarily or unique about this church or this place. Um, It is the Holy Word of God that these people have received into their hearts and have believed in the gospel. And that gospel is that without Christ, we are dead. That's why this slide behind me says, from death to life. See, what Jesus does, he doesn't make bad people good. He makes dead people alive. And that's what we are seeing testified to here this morning. I'm going to read. From Psalm 107. And this will be the only sermon you're going to hear, if at all, other than what you're going to hear from their own mouths as they share what God has done. Psalm 107 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. And the psalmist continues as he continues in 107, describing all of the troubles of man, all of the challenges that we might face. He uses some word pictures to describe that, but whatever challenge, whatever pain, whatever brokenness you have experienced in your life, these dear ones have experienced in their lives, they are here to say, I have been redeemed. What Jesus did on the cross when he laid down his life on my behalf was enough. And that's what they're here to tell you. And so today isn't the day of salvation for these friends. They are here to tell the world of their Redeemer. Jesus Christ. And if you're here watching, I am going to pray in just a moment. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to just ask you to be sensitive to what God does in this time. Listen to their stories. Listen to what they share of Christ. And perhaps today might be the day of salvation for you because you will believe once and for all. You've heard about Jesus You've dabbled in a little bit of religion. I think maybe the church, not real sure about it. Maybe it is for me, maybe it isn't. But you're going to hear what Jesus does in real lives, testified to this morning. And so listen, be attentive, and allow the Holy Spirit of God to speak to your heart and trust what he is saying. He is good. He is so good. And that's all that we're here going to celebrate. So thank you again for being with us this morning. We're so glad to see all of you. If you worship regularly in another church family, I just want today to be an encouragement to you. You go back to your home church, and you say the kingdom of God is being built. We see it in our church. We see it in these churches. Share the good news around. Get people excited about what Jesus is doing. And if you don't regularly gather and worship somewhere week after week to hear the word of God, to allow the word to do the work in your life, then we want to invite you. Don't just be here on this celebration day. But be here week after week, and we'll open up the scriptures, and we'll testify to what God does and speak 
and let the truth overcome all of the lies and all of the things that the world tells us. So let us pray, and then we'll begin this day of celebration. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word, your word which has done great and mighty things in my own life and so many lives here in this room. And this morning we get to hear directly from these dear saints who at some point, whether it was last week, last year, many years ago, you redeemed them. You raised them from death to life and they have decided today to let the world know and to share their story. So Holy Spirit, we invite you in. We pray against any distractions that would keep us from hearing from you this morning. Let us hear from you, God. Thank you for this day. It is for our good, but ultimately we know everything about this day we give to you because we want to live for your glory and your glory alone. We worship you, Jesus, because you are worthy. And we're going to hear many stories testifying to that fact today. What a gift today is. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Very first baptism is going to be Allie Eckert. So let's hear from Allie. Jesus is God's son, and he has forgiven me of my sins, and he is making me want to be more like him. Jesus is God's when I was four at FCA camp, I learned the gospel, and I've never forgotten it, and it goes like, Jesus came to earth as a baby, he lived a perfect life, he died on the cross for our sins, he was buried in the tomb, and after three days, he rose again, and that's the gospel! I asked Jesus into my heart in third grade. We were in um, singing slow worship. He could forgive us of anything, and that the slowly worship song made me like happy inside. I asked Jesus into my heart when I was in third grade, listening to slow worship, a slow worship song at church. I've seen Jesus at work in my life when we, when we went through all the struggles trying to adopt my little brother Jet. We prayed every night and God answered them. Getting baptized means starting a new life in Christ. I want to be baptized because I've asked Jesus into my heart and I want to show the whole world. City Church has helped me when we separate into s small groups and we learn different stories each day. He taught me that he can answer your prayers no matter what. My name is Allie and I've been made new by Jesus. It's warm. Can you all hear me back there? All right. We're trying out some new microphones here. I tell you, there's nothing sweeter than standing right there and watching a little girl worship Jesus as we sing this morning. And I got to see Allie doing that. Allie, I'm so thankful for your testimony this morning and what you shared with the church. And you shared the gospel. Anybody can share the gospel. A little girl can share the gospel. What an amazing truth that is. And so it's because of your profession and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you, my little sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bear with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in new life. We're going to hear Camden Sarrett's story now. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. The gospel is um, like a, like good news about Jesus and um, what he what he has done for me. I, I ask Jesus to be the Lord in my life because um, when we went up to Glorieta um, in New Mexico, we were um, we were just singing. And that just helped me um, to like, just just to like that that just helped me to um, to just know more about him, and it just got my interest. Just I I felt I felt better once I had 
sang um was have um sang the songs um up in Glorietta and just like I, I just I just felt better once I um did that and once I went to that church camp. Um it means that like he is like going to be like my father figure. He's going to um help me get through everything and what I need to uh he's gonna help me accomplish things in my life and for me to get um through it and he's just going to um be there for me anytime I need him. So I I felt um and giving me grace by just just giving me just support and every time I've asked forgiveness to him and I pray I asked this for forgiveness he's helped me um, get through it and it put a lot of weight off my chest baptism means that you um, you go down and you you go down under the water and that means that when you um, when you like go down, your body goes in a grave, and it comes back like um, like brand new, and you have like a um, a mindset of what Jesus um, like what Jesus like would have if if so, and like what he would do, and to be um, and to just be a leader. City Church has helped me um, get close to God by um, when I have like a question, I ask, um, I, I usually ask um, Heath and he gives me like, or when we're in um, our like um, small groups on Wednesday nights, he gives me like a lot of examples about how, like, like if I don't get something, he gives me more examples and he just explains it a lot better to me for me to um, realize what's happening. I, um, if a friend wanted to follow Jesus, I would tell them that um, God is, would always there, be there for you, and he would just um, he would just help you um, get through everything and like how how you live your life. He will give you. Um, He'll give you challenges, but he'll always be there for you to ask him anything and for you to just um, just to talk to him about anything you want and you don't have to be like nervous about what you are talking to him um, and just like he, he, he'll be there like for you like every single time you ask him to or you like just want to talk to him, he'll be there. My name is Camden, and I've been made new by Jesus. Well, hey, this is Camden. Uh, you heard his testimony. Uh, it's been my privilege for the last two years to be his student group leader. And uh, he's just such a joy on Wednesday nights, uh, just watching him grow in faith. and. Uh, you know, I loved his testimony about singing in Glorietta and just the changes in our minds that we make whenever uh, we, we start getting filled with the Spirit. And uh, Camden, uh, your dad stopped me the other day. He wanted, to, uh, he wanted to speak a word of truth into your life. And so he, he gave me a little uh, message that he wanted me to read for you. So I'm going to read it now. This is from Rex. <clears throat> Camden, you make us proud as parents for the decision you're making today and the <clears throat> excitement you have for putting on Christ in baptism. I'm sure as a church we can all say rejoice. Almost three years ago we saw your brother Carson make the same decision and we were so proud of him, seeing, become, seeing him become a young man and a living example. Now here you are making the same choice to become closer to God through baptism and being filled by his fruitful spirit. The fruit of the spirit is listed in Galatians 5, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These qualities are examples of living Christ-like. We've all been guilty of sin in the flesh, but through Jesus we are rescued. Today is the time to trench your faith in the Lord, and there will never be anything you can't overcome. Love you, Dad. <clears throat> On profession of your faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism.
Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Now we're going to hear from Haley Barnett. This is the Son of God. He has changed my life by teaching me to love people who I might not like. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. I asked Jesus to be my Savior when my grandma died. I needed his own to be there beside me. He helped me be patient with my brothers. Baptism is the good news of Jesus Christ. City Church has helped me love people I might not like. My name is Haley and I've been made new by Jesus. Good morning. What an amazing day this is, isn't it? Um, in a year and change now where there's been, I don't know, a lot of times where it seems like everything has gone off the rails and uh, God has maybe hung up the out to lunch sign. Um, is there any more greater proof than this? 14 baptisms that he has been at work this past year, even when we didn't see it. Um, Haley's story is, is one of those stories of him at work, even when God didn't seem like he was doing much. Um, at the end of 2019, we moved in with our, my in-laws so that um, while well, our house was being built. And um, not long after we moved in, um, my mother-in-law uh, was taken to the hospital and tragically died a few weeks later. And there were times, which I'm sure many of you can um, relate to, where we would we would cry out, God, where are you? Do you hear us? And it felt like our prayers a lot of times were just bouncing off the ceiling. Um, but God was absolutely at work. He was faithful in making all things new. He was keeping his promise. Um, and Haley is here today because of that, that promise. Um, I learned a few weeks later that uh, Haley had taken her broken heart um, to Jesus uh, in in her tears <clears throat> she had had some conversations with her Savior and she had trusted him to save her and make her new and mend her broken heart when it looked like God was out to lunch he he was at work saving my little girl that about right, Haley? Have you trusted Jesus as your Savior to save you from your sins? <laughs> then on the basis of that profession, kiddo, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried with Him in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. Now we're going to hear Michael Karn's story. I had specifically fought against truth very hard, and that was the story for most of my college years. Um, but growing up, I grew up in Flower Mound, just across DFW, and I uh, started off great family. It was unfortunately a very common story, um, but uh, I was involved in sports. Um, Suburban sports, I took way too seriously. I made grades that were like just barely good enough to get by, and that's all I wanted to do. And uh, I had a real severe lack of direction, and uh, really most of it was a, a meaning in life, real severe direction and meaning of life. So um, I would go to church with my friends intermittently, but uh, I had no understanding of what God was. I had no relationship with him. 
um, whatsoever on a deeper level. When I went to college, that had given me the freedom uh, to really disregard all the rules that had like had a vague, uh, given me, a, I've had a vague sense of morality, but whenever I had gone to college, I had just given this, just given it up to whatever I wanted to do. <clears throat> so that led me to college where I then had freedom to disregard all the rules, uh, all impeded by a vague sense of cultural morality. And uh, there I kind of grew into a man child and I really abused alcohol and everybody really thought it was hilarious and I thought I was the man. And then I objectified women and I thought everybody thought I was cool. And um, I was really the king of the man child. Um, I felt like I was on top of the world, but I was really kind of just stepping on everybody around me. I used everybody around me and everything around me in order to kind of make myself the ultimate. That bulletproof exterior and hollow soul led me to a place where I was so reliant on external admiration that it was, um, that I crumbled after a college girlfriend had cheated on me. And how ridiculous is it like that a college girlfriend led me to crumble up in, like my very, like my very core. I mean, that was all it took to destroy my confidence and my shallow identity. I, if I wasn't as awesome as I thought I was, then really kind of who, who was I after that? Um, and I found out the answer to that was not drinking drugs, pornography and parties, which I delved into very hard for. But um, even in that uh, mess, I felt God slowly calling me back. He placed a roommate in my life that would entertain like my like arrogant theological jabs I would take at Christianity um, because I was so angry at God or what I thought was God or um, that I, I had this, this arrogance about me and I was taking it out on really everybody around me. He then also placed a beautiful, faithful woman who after college brought me to church every single Sunday and I would willingly go um, and she took me every Sunday um, and I was just using it as fodder to diminish the word and the truth and even use my own arrogance that I read everything I could about Christ and I would take that and I would use it as debate material to try to deny that Christ existed um, to all my Christian friends. But in that, he just kept drawing me in. In that, he kept having conversations with people who were far smarter than me. He had I had conversations with people who um, were caring and that didn't just look at it as a debate, but they looked at it as they cared about like whether I was going to see them in the life after this, whether my soul was going to be saved. And so they didn't care to win an argument, they cared about me and all of that just led me down this path of just thinking I was, I had the answers and all of a sudden I was being steered constantly back towards him. I'm in awe of his grace. I, I cursed at him. I exploited relationships with his children. And I tried to make everyone and everything God but him. It was embarrassing to say the least, but um, I didn't know how long he would continue to stand there, like arms wide open, waiting for me. And I found out shockingly that the answer is forever. And um, that's what it felt like it took to finally get there. And I got tired of fighting the God of the universe and finally accepted his love that had never really gone away. I was overwhelmed by the support of all the people around me and community in Dallas and here in Melissa. 
It seems that God is using his people to constantly just bring me back onto the path. And I, 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 I feel it every time we, I have conversations with just somebody in the church that just ends up, I know that baptism isn't a symbol of my arrival at perfection, but rather a public acknowledgement that I am imperfect and I am in need of a true relationship with the perfect father through the sacrifice of the perfect son. And that's my only real hope. I keep searching his word to point me towards who he is so that it may be more like him, that all my relationships in my life are more like his relationships, that the love just is, is always there, that I love my wife and my children and my family and my friends just as he has loved the entire church and like I don't feel like I can ever get to that point so it just feels like there's always a draw to just be a little bit more loving towards somebody because of the love he's shown me and the grace he's shown me in the childlike behavior that I constantly was in and I never really had uh, gotten out of for a long period of time and in the fall of 2012 I finally accepted that love and it's given me a lot of thought to get to this point and now 2020 to finally just be able to sit back and say like I would love to profess his name and get baptized and to know what it truly means at this point in my life um, what it means to profess his name. Jesus says that my identity is no longer built on sand and it's no longer a house of cards that can just be wiped out by someone or something, that everything that I stand on is so much more firm now. I have a identity that isn't based in fleeting things, that um, I know who I am outside of this world and that it's calming, it's calming, it's, 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 it's calming to your soul to like have that, that, that peace. I strive to lean on him daily now um, so that when the world kicks my legs out from under me and it will, um, that I'm no longer subject to like the hopeless despair that comes along with that. But now my life is really truly rooted in a loving, awesome, forever God. My name is Michael and I've been made new by Jesus. <laughs> this is Kristen, his wife, that beautiful girl he testified to who drug him to church every Sunday. And um, Michael, I just want to say, hearing your testimony, what an amazing thing. Again, I'd expect many friends in this room, you may have some idea about religion. And I hope what you heard in Michael's story is Jesus doesn't demand that we get cleaned up. He's the one who cleans us up. He's the one who changes and transforms our lives. We come to him in all of our imperfection. And that is Michael's story, and I'm so grateful for that. And so it's an honor to be able to celebrate this day with you. And so we're going to let Kristen baptize her husband. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise to death. Buried in death and raised to walk in the newness of life. <laughs> He's changed my mindset and how I think about life and my life and my perspective of it. I asked Jesus to be in my life at D now. I was on my one-on-one -on -one with 
my leader, Gracie. I just felt so connected with him, but I just felt like it was the right time. The gospel is the Holy Bible. When we were at DNL in our groups, when we were talking about the Bible, I just felt like at the time, I just felt so connected with him. And I just felt like I had that really good relationship at the moment. And I feel like I do right now. And I feel like I've had that relationship I've wanted with him. Every night I write down like a Bible verse and then I write down what it means to me and how it like how it's affected my life and how I see it. Baptism means just another step to Christ and how I'm going to get to him and follow his path. I feel when I think about baptism I feel like I'm just falling into his hands and he's going to take him to me. I want to be baptized because I feel like that relationship with him is so important to me that I want to learn more about him and I I want to be his child. I want to I want to meet him someday. City Church has helped me by like with youth and D now. I just they've helped me more connect with him and talk about him more and pray more and stuff. And, just make him feel more close to me. I would like make, I would make something for them and I would write them some Bible verses and I would talk to them about how he, what he does for us and how he's so important and that he can change your life. Like I've talked more about Jesus. I've. Like he's a big part of my life now because at first I just, when I was younger, I just, I knew he was there. Like he wasn't a big part to me. But once I get older, I just realize that he's such a big part of my life. A specific time I've seen him work in my life is like when I'm reading the Bible, like stuff just comes to me about him. I don't know why, it's just when I'm reading it, I just really understand it. And it just, I don't know, I feel like I learned so much. And I just feel like I know so much about it. My name is Callie, and I've been made new by Jesus. Amen. Callie, I'm so encouraged by your maturity already. Did you hear that she said every night she reads some scripture, she writes the verse down and says, this is what that verse speaks to me. I mean, there's many adults in this room that don't do that, Kelly. And so your love of the Lord is apparent. And I would hope that that would be an encouragement to all of us, that we should be pursuing Christ just as he has pursued us and he pursued you, Kelly. And so I know your family is proud of you. We're proud of you. And it is my privilege to be able to baptize you as my little sister in Christ. And it's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism. Raised to walk in a new life with Him. Now we're going to hear from Trace Garrett. Changed my life by um, dying on the cross for my sins. I asked Jesus to be Lord of my life when I was at Pine Cove during the summer. Before we went to bed, he was talking about what it means when Jesus died on the cross for our sins. A um, person in my cabin asked if he could accept um, Jesus in his heart. After he went, I thought, well, maybe I could do that. I went there and um, asked him to be Lord of, of my heart. What baptism means is um, it, you, you get dunked in water and it like shows that you've washed your sin away and you, be, and you come out as a new person. I want to be baptized because I want to um, show that I believe in Jesus. I know that he um, died on the cross for my sin, I want to be baptized because 
to, I want to show everybody that I can, um, I believe in Jesus when I broke my leg, um, I, I thought I want that my leg wouldn't like move again. And then every like day it kept on like getting healed and healed. And that's what a way I thought he went at work. My name is Trace and I've been made new by Jesus. Special when uh, we hear the faith of the child, and a real blessing that we get to have David Garrett, Trace's dad, baptize him today as well. All right, uh, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Give me Christ. Praise the Lord. Give me Christ. Amen. We're going to hear from Claire Garland. Let's watch her story. So Jesus is my Savior, and He's a person I feel like I could turn to whenever, like, all things, like, when I feel like things are going against me, like everything in the world. Or whenever I just feel alone, He's always there. And He's changed my life because by just being there for me, when I'm, when I feel like I have no friends, He's, he's the one I turn to, and He's just, He's always there. The gospel is God's word, and it's just the good news that Jesus Christ has died on the cross for our sins, and that through Him we are made new, and we can um, be forgiven, and He's our way to live an eternal life with Him. <laughs> Originally, I was brought up into a Christian household, and we went to church every Sunday, and it was just like my nature to accept Christ at a young age. So I did like around kindergarten. The summer before sixth grade, I ended up moving to Texas, and I didn't have any friends, and I felt really like alone. And so I kind of blamed God, saying, like, if you loved me, like, why would you put me in this position? And then there was a time um, where I just felt, like, really alone, and I was tired of it. And so I turned to Christ, and I re-accepted Him, and I truly, like, understood what it meant to accept Christ. When, when I was in kindergarten, I didn't, and I just really felt, like, the love of Christ, and I felt wanted. A specific time I've seen Jesus work in my life is when, it's mainly, like, a lot of times, but one specific, specific time I remember is when I was sitting at home and I had just moved and I had seen pictures of my friends that they were posting together and I really missed them and I just felt really left out and I like missed my sisters and my family a lot and they were having little get togethers and I just I really wanted to be there and I understood I couldn't because I was so far away and I turned to Christ again or I just went and prayed and I just really see I saw him work in my life and tell me that everything was going to be okay because he has a plan and he was just there like guiding me through it and he's always there when I need guidance. So baptism stands for or represents our commitment and faith in God and it's just to show that um, we're dedicated to Christ. I want to be baptized because um, I really want to share my testimony and I want to make my faith public and I just really want to inspire others and share and spread the gospel and I feel like being baptized is the perfect like first step. So um, when I first moved to Texas, I went to City Church the first year, and I really felt like it did help me like grow in my relationship with Christ. Because once I accepted Him, I didn't understand like what I should do next. And City Church has really helped me like guide. Like they just gave me guidance as well to like understand what I needed to do next, and that I should like grow in my relationship with God. And that um, it's not just a religion; it is a relationship, and you need to have a relationship in order to to like maintain like your love for Christ and City Church with all of its activities it's just helped me um, with worshiping and praising the Lord and I'm able to talk to my friends or youth leaders and hear their testimonies and I'm just often inspired by City Church and especially like D now it just really helps you grow your faith. For someone that I meet who doesn't know Christ I want them to know that he's loving and that he's caring and that um, although you feel like we're forcing our religion on you it's a relationship and that He's always going to be there for you. And when you feel alone 
or sad and if you turn to him, he's gonna be there and he's gonna guide you through it. My group on Wednesday night and my youth leaders really helped me grow my faith in Jesus because they know a lot more about like God's word and they help me understand it more and they help me understand that um, the love that Christ has for me. My youth leaders just really know how to, they're also loving and kind and they just share, they're like, they're like Christ and they inspire me to grow closer to them because how close they are. My name is Claire and I've been made new by Jesus. You see the joy on Claire's face in that, in that testimony? Just the joy of Christ that just exuded through her interview and her testimony. And I, I wish that we could have shown some of the outtakes where she was just giggling. I mean, she was just <laughs> overjoyed with what Christ has done in her life. And she's seen that. And you have now shared your testimony with the world. It's online. It's everywhere. And so you're following what Christ has called you to do by sharing the, His love to the world. So I'm so proud of you, Claire. And uh, it's my privilege to baptize you, my sister in Christ. It's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in a new life with Him. All right, let's keep this rolling. We're going to hear from Dallas. This to me is my Lord and Savior, and He changed my life by like just showing me really like that He really is a miracle worker and that nothing's impossible through Him. Um, the Gospel is Jesus' word and message to us and just like telling us that we can have a relationship through Him because of His um, Son, Jesus' death on the cross. Um, I asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life in eighth grade at D-Now. Um, a specific time just been working my life was actually like really recently. Um, it was after youth group a couple weeks ago. Um, I was in like a really not good mental state and um, so like after the message and everything, I went, like after the service, I went out to my car and I just prayed for like 30 minutes and I was like, I need help. I was like, I can't do this by myself anymore. Like I really need somebody to save me, I need you. And then these like little things started happening and I, at first I thought it was a coincidence, but then it like, I was like, wow, that's not a coincidence. It's like, that's really Jesus working and like saving me. And so things have like gotten way better since then. Baptism to me means um, you're proclaiming Jesus' death, burial, um, resurrection, and just showing people that you're a Christian and a believer. Um, I want to get baptized because I want to like make my next step, like building my relationship with Jesus and showing my friends and family like that I'm really strong in my faith, I guess, and just to like build a deeper relationship. Um, something I tell others about my faith is that no matter how hard things get and like no matter how dark of a road you're going down, Jesus is always there at the end of the tunnel and He'll save you and He'll take you out of whatever you're in. Um, City Church has helped me follow Jesus closer because um, when I started coming here in like sixth or seventh grade, I can't really remember exactly, um, everybody's been like so supportive and really helped me like build my um, relationship with Jesus and always like kept me on focus. So it's just been like really nice to have people who support me. So it's been made it a lot easier to build my relationship. Okay, um, student groups have specifically helped my faith because each lesson that we have, it's usually something that like I really need to hear. So it always helps me again, stay on my focus and build my relationship. I asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life in eighth grade at D now. Um, after we, like after I asked him to be the Lord of my life, it was a really difficult road after that because I was still a little unsure, but I knew like the path I wanted to take. Um, so it just took a lot of like faith and I had a lot of people help me, like Miss Laura and Miss Dina, they really impacted that for me. Um, it just it it took a lot to like actually be able to build my relationship. My name is Dallas, and I've been made new by Jesus. Dallas, it's just so cool to see how God's been at work in your life, and just even throughout your teenage years, and I know I've seen you be here and present with us, and what a testimony it is to our leaders, our student leaders, our kids' leaders, that faithfully... Uh, 
build into the lives of all of these students week in and week out. So those are their student leaders, kids leaders. Thank you for what you do because you can tell by these stories, and not just Dallas's, but many stories that you are making a difference week in and week out. And so Dallas, I'm so proud of you that you would share your faith with our church and that we can celebrate with you that Jesus has truly transformed your life uh, from death to life. And it's my privilege to baptize you, my sister in Christ. It's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're buried with Christ in baptism. We're raised to walk in a new life with you. church much don't have a whole lot of uh, memories of childhood going to church some you know summer camps but uh, other than that not a whole lot of a uh, church attendance I was taught to work hard and you know you, you get what you work for in life grew up got married uh, married my wife um, she moved off with me to the Marine Corps um, we moved quite a bit uh, in those four years as well as after and you know we went to church when we made time and I really came believe in Jesus. Unfortunately, I had it stuck in my head that I was not worthy. You know, I had this idea of, of a perfect Christian man, and I just didn't feel like I fit the bill. And, you know, we ebbed and flowed. We'd go to church, and um, life would get in the way, and then we'd find our way back to church, and life would get in the way. You know, I'd pay attention to church. I'd listen in church. But I never felt like, again, I was worthy. I guess I really hit a low point in COVID, like a lot of people did, and I really became a person that I'm not really proud of. I felt God calling to me, calling to my heart. Um, I was still resistant. I still didn't feel like, especially in that point, that that was worthy. So we started to come to church um, whenever COVID kind of let up and we started to come back a little bit more and a little bit more. I tried tried paying attention. I paid attention. Um, I tried getting moving past that point that was stuck in my head that, that I'm not worthy or that I have to attain a certain I don't know, goodness, if you will. Somewhere in there, I guess, I decided, you know, really start praying, really start trying to, to overcome that. And really, some, somewhere in my, my rock bottom of COVID and, and everything, I, I think uh, I really started praying a little bit harder and, and really, really, I guess, started opening up to God. Um, I guess I was ashamed of my ignorance. You know, I had support out there. I had the church. I had the elders. I didn't go and, and speak to anyone. I wish I would have. I wish I would have made that transition earlier. I wish I would have uh, seeked that knowledge a lot earlier, but I did not. Um, in any event, um, I did finally uh, come to accept Jesus Christ. It would have, I would say it would be um, probably late last year as we were starting to come out of I guess the real low of COVID. Um, really, I just kind of hit a low point and, and I prayed and prayed. Once I got over the, the point of having to feel like I was worthy, once I got past that sticking point, I mean, that was it, I, you know. It was like a new calm. You know, even amongst everything else that was going on, it was just, you know, a calm. Um, and after that, I've, I've tried to pray more. I've tried to, you know, read my Bible more as much as I can. Um, and then when we finally moved back to Melissa, you know, we were gone for a few months and we started to come every week, um, started to get more involved in the church. And I really feel like this is, I mean, coming out of it all, you know, it's, it's great. My wife and I started to re-engage um, just to grow our marriage within God, how God intended. And man, that's been great. And, Decided to go ahead and join the church, take the plunge, you know. My wife's been uh, obviously volunteering in the Littles for a couple of years, and you know, I want to start volunteering. I want to, and I want to make this, you know, where my kids grow up, where I grow in Christ. I did have one verse I wanted to share, um, and it it was actually introduced to me and reengaged, and it really this verse really shaped my sticking point in the whole in the whole everything. Um, and 
in my ignorance, and that was Ephesians 2.8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is a gift of God. That was what I had a hard time getting past. I was waiting till I was worthy to commit, and I'll never be worthy, right? And that was, that was the moment. Whenever I got past that, that it all became clear. You know, I've, I've accepted the, Jesus Christ as my savior. Um, I really want the whole world to know that. I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm proud that I finally have gotten there. Um, you know, I, I want to walk with Christ and I want to live with my wife in eternity, right? I'm, I got something to look forward to beyond just, just this earthly body. Um, it means a lot, really. I've obviously with Green Gage been, been digging into what that looks like um, for a role as a husband. City Church being more of a Bible church versus some of the other churches I've attended. Um, it's, it's less influence from the person you know, up front talking and more influence from the Bible, from Jesus' word. And that, that resonated with me a lot more. That, no, for lack of a better word, caught my attention. Um, and then once I started listening and paying attention, it was even easier to follow because, I mean, at the end of the day, you're not trying to follow, I guess, man's version of the Bible. You're, you're following the Bible. That makes it, I mean, for me, a lot easier. <laughs> Don't wait until you're perfect. Don't wait until you feel like you've reached a level to follow Christ. It's, you're not going to attain it. My name is Tanner, and I have been made new by Jesus. Oh, what a powerful testimony. Some of you, you heard him reference our re-engage ministry, and some of you have heard me talk about that before, and we talk about it in the context of marriage, but... Um, really, and I've said this many times, maybe now you'll believe it as you hear from him, re-engage is the gospel. It's the gospel applied to marriage and lived out in marriage. And um, Tanner heard the gospel there. And what a joy it is to um, just hear that testimony, Tanner. It's such an encouragement to me as your brother in Christ. You know, we have a, we have a saying in the Marine Corps, Semper Fidelis. He's the one who is always faithful. He is always faithful and he always will be. It's my honor to baptize you, my brother in Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism of the death, raised to walk in the life. Now we're going to hear Avery Stinton's story. Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I believe that He has changed my life by teaching me grace, love, and compassion for others. The gospel is God's written word. When I was in fourth grade, I had the opportunity to attend Pine Cove, and I asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I remember feeling the excitement and joy from the weekend that I had spent with fellow believers. Jesus worked in my life when I was anxious about taking my first star test. I couldn't fall asleep because of how worried I was on how I would do. I prayed until I felt at ease and fell asleep. The next day I went in feeling confident. Baptism is a celebration of accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want to be baptized to celebrate my acceptance of Jesus as my Lord and Savior. City Church has helped me follow Jesus closer whenever my grandmother passed away. And I remember all the grief that I felt in City Church gave me a sense of community to lean on. I'm so grateful for how much our church loves us. Something that I would want to tell someone who is not a believer in Jesus is how much he has impacted my life and helped me to not worry so much about little things that in the end don't matter. Um, my youth group leader, Camille, has helped to further my walk with the Lord. My name is Avery and I have been made new by Jesus.
Man, I hope you see all the smiles on these faces. Man, it brings me so much joy. Um, wow, what a powerful testimony. Avery, thank you for fighting through your anxiousness and your nervousness to share your story with our church and to share with the world. It's a powerful story. And um, just hearing you talk about how Jesus is there for you and you sought him out in prayer and he answered you and he does that. And um, I hope we're all reminded um, to seek the Lord in prayer in our time of need. Um, Avery encouraged me to do that. So it's because of your profession of faith in Christ as your Lord and Savior, Avery, that I get to baptize you, my little sister. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bear with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in new life. Now we're going to hear Olivia Jones. Jesus is my savior who has saved me from a lot of t- tough situations in my life. And he's changed my life by opening up my eyes and seeing that it ha- something, some things have happened for the better. The gospel is something that, or someone, uh, that has saved me and from a lot of things, family stuff and friends. I made Jesus my savior whenever my parents got divorced and it was really tough. So, and I didn't know like where to go. So I went to him and asked him to just like be there for me. Baptism means that you're like cleaning out everything and starting a new like perspective on everything and he's just gonna be like he's gonna be there for you all the time well he already has and he's and it's just that I that you can focus on him even more and just start clean I would tell them that Jesus is always there for them and that he loves them. I want to be baptized to show people that my love for Jesus and that uh, it is important to do it because it's to show your love for him and to show that you can trust in him and that other people can. City Church has helped me get closer to him because in small groups they help me a lot when like studying the Bible he just it kind of just made me feel like it will get better and that it things will change Jesus worked through my life through um, my grandma because she always reminds me that he's gonna be there and every week Um, A lot of the weeks she gives us Bible verses to study. And uh, in softball, I always pray to him that we will win. And that draws me closer to him. My name is Olivia and I've been made new by Jesus. What an awesome testimony, Olivia. Jesus is always there. I I took away from your story just hearing how faithful he is, that no matter what's happening in your life, Jesus is there. He's present with you. And uh, what a a great promise to lean on and to be reminded of. And it's because of your profession in, in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Olivia, that I get to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism of the death, raised to walk in new life. Jesus is my savior, but it's deeper. When uh, my parents split up, I wanted to take Jesus to like more seriously and have a very strong relationship with him. I asked Jesus to be my savior um, when it was D-Now weekend um, and I was having the one-on-one talks with my leader. 
and she asked me the big question and I was just like yes because it's the per it was the perfect time to like it was after my parents split up but it was still like transitioning so I thought it was just the perfect time to say yes it made me feel really happy especially um on Wednesday uh, night at youth it was the second Wednesday the first Wednesday after and um Amy asked me I mean asked who like accepted Jesus into their life and I didn't think it was like that big of a deal and she like freaked out and it was so funny and it made me feel really happy that there was so many people to support me Miss Harp and Amy they like from day one of youth they've like always helped me discover Jesus Jesus and figure out that like I wanted him to be my savior to me baptism means to kind of share publicly that you accepted Jesus into your life I want to be baptized because um, it kind of was like a moment of relief that like I had Jesus there for me and I think that like sharing publicly getting baptized would be great I would tell one of my friends that didn't follow Jesus um, I would probably first invite them to youth group to kind of like get a feel and have a, like a mini lesson about who Jesus is and then I would probably invite them to Sunday church every now and then and see if they'll start coming on their own. I saw Jesus working in my life when um, my parents split up and my dad was a couple states away and it all kind of sprung a surprise on me and it was really hard but then I started um, reading the Bible and I was already coming to youth and I had all of my friends supporting me through everything and um, I just thought that was Jesus telling me to follow his path. The gospel um, to me is the good news to share with other people and invite Christ into their life. My name is Amelia and I've been made new by Jesus. We're so proud of you, and uh, just what I took from what you were saying is that God's timing is, he's, not, he's hardly ever early, but he's always perfectly on time, and that in your time of need, he was there, and he's always going to be there for you. So uh, just like Miss Amy, and we're, we're super excited. <laughs> we, we are so glad that you are now a sister in Christ with us, so um, I get to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with him in death, raised the walk in the new life. Alright, now we get to oh, sorry. Now we get to hear from Miss Addie Alexander. He's the person that um I talk to probably the most every night because I pray every night. Um he the king for everybody, and he's the one that made us all complete. Um, and what he's done for me is that he allows me to do the things that I'm able to do every day. I ask Jesus to be in my heart back at my old church, and I gave me the certificate, and it I guess I filled it out and they prayed for me. Really wanted to be like get to be baptized, but I never really talked about it. But I wanted to allow him in my heart that kind of you're a follower of him. Like it doesn't change a lot, but it like you're a follower of Christ and Jesus. So he just helped me be closer to Jesus because I get to come here every Wednesday night and learn more and more about him.
Camille is really patient with us because we talk a lot and she's a really good explainer. They're kind of silly but it's true. I, um, I used to wake up and say, Jesus, this story I said a lot, Jesus was on my fan and I was up there eating grapes with him and we were talking about everything. Um, that was one of the most times I really saw him. Why don't you come with me on a Wednesday night? Come church with me. Get to know him. My name is Addie and I've been made new by Jesus. Well, Miss Addie, we are so we are so proud of you. And this is her stepdad, uh, Nick Scott, I'm sorry. Um, and we are just so excited. Uh, did you want to say something? We just couldn't be more proud of you, opening your heart to Jesus and accepting him. We love you very much. <laughs> Addie, we're, we're so glad that you were with us. And uh, I'll say this to our student leaders and you guys that are younger in this, in this room, don't let your age dictate how you go disciple kids. Use your 20s <laughs> to the, the fullest of your abilities because of kids like Addie, and you've heard a bunch of them. We need more of you to build into these kids and point them to Jesus. If you have a relationship with him, you can go disciple. You, the Lord can use you. So, Addie, it's my privilege to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with him in death, raised to walk in the newness of life. Okay, our, our last baptism for today, um, I've, I personally got to see this brother grow in his walk and to see another one of my brothers <laughs> walk with him. And um, just the power of Christian fellowship and to see discipleship done, um, to see a dead man be made alive is uh, <laughs> something that's been very powerful to, to watch. And I'm so proud of you, Jared. And uh, let's, uh, let's see Jared's story. Whenever I was a kid, whenever, whenever I, was a kid I, I grew up uh, going to church um, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, Wednesday nights. Uh, my mom was real adamant uh, about uh, taking her kids to church, um, especially after my, my dad died whenever I was eight years old. We were really plugged in at the church. We would attend regularly, and you know that was really kind of my second home. That led up into high school, and you know, once I really got to live life on my own, when I uh, moved into my college years, I really um, got away from going to church as much. So that it wasn't, since it wasn't forced anymore, I didn't really want to go anymore. Although when I was a kid, I did accept Christ into my life. Upon that acceptance, I was not living a life for Him. I was not doing servant work, fulfilling my life for His glory. Whenever I was in college, um, I did not attend church regularly anymore since it wasn't uh, forced upon me from my mother. I got in with the wrong crowds. I was into partying and, and drinking, and that was uh, something that I, that I did quite frequently. I was in and out of classes. I wasn't really paying attention to my schoolwork as much as I should have, and I was really living a selfish life. All, it was all about me and what I wanted to do. I was um, pretty mad at the world for the, the, the hand of cards that I felt that I was dealt. Instead of relying on the Lord, although I knew He's been with me, I chose different ways to, to cope with reality. I quickly realized that my life was not going anywhere, and I was, I was hoping that there was, there was something else out there for me. I ended up starting a family, and however, that, that family was not built on a solid foundation with Christ as, as the foundation. That led to 
what you might call a broken home. It allowed um, my kids to, to see me in a way that I did not want them to see me. I had a lustful heart that, that seeked uh, different ways to satisfy myself. Ultimately, that led to broken relationships and me um, not knowing where to go. One of my good friends, Weston Bartlett, um, kept inviting me to go to church and I would quickly say no, I, I didn't want to do that. I would, I would stiff harm, I would stiff harm him every attempt that I could. Um, but he never stopped. He was really adamant about me uh, having an opportunity to attend church. When I was on my own and felt like I was at rock bottom, I finally uh, accepted his offer and, and, and went to church with him one Sunday. Um, I remember walking into the basketball gym one Sunday morning and everybody was so friendly to me. Everyone was, was happy that I was there, even though they, I felt like a lot of them knew what I've gone through and my sinful struggles. Yet they welcomed me with open arms. I've always in the past felt judged. I continued to go to church and I ended up getting plugged into regeneration at Watermark Church thanks to Pastor Matt and this is a 12-step program that I completed. It took me 14 months and throughout that journey um, it really helped me understand who I was as a person, who I am and, and what my sinful struggles are, how I can healthily take care of those sinful struggles in a different way that I've ever done before. Through that class, I was really learning about who Jesus is, and I was building a relationship with Him. And that was something that was missing in my life. Like I said, I've gone to church when I was growing up quite regularly, and I knew of Jesus, but I didn't know Him personally and on an intimate level. It was through this class and through this program that I started to unravel these layers of the onion to really get down to what the root of my struggles were and to finally be open and honest with people in my life about what was bothering me so much and what was really weighing me down and how that I did not deal with death in my life and how I resented others that did not have to go through the same things that I went through in life. Moving forward, knowing that, that Christ has been on my side throughout the whole way, and now that I've started to pursue a, a life with Christ and accept Him in my life as my Lord and Savior, I understand that I'm not doing this alone and that I have somebody to rely on through prayer and somebody that's been there um, with me throughout the whole journey. I've always been hesitant to share with others my past and things that I struggle with because I want people to look at me and, and think of me as a great person. Um, I'm really worried about what people think of me, how they, how they feel about me, and I disguised myself and really put up a false image of who I really was and did not share that with even the people that were closest to me because I really cared about what they thought of me. I quickly found out that being honest was a way that was freeing and it allowed others to really get to know the real me and ultimately that's what I wanted. I feel like through those relationships that I built through honesty that they have become stronger. Relying on my own selfish ways, I was not ever able to open up to people and be honest with them. But relying on the Lord through prayer, it's easier for me to be honest. I know that if God is for me, who can be against me? And I stop worrying about what other people think of me as much because I know where my truth lies and that's with the relationship with the Lord. Moving forward, I'm not as scared to show and reveal my, my struggles to others. And I want to work towards using that mess in my life and allowing that to become a message to others that hopefully can, through my story, help motivate them to find 
their path in life and to lead others to Christ. After completing regeneration, I can honestly say that I have a new life in Christ. And, and that is um, very rewarding. Um, before, before Christ, before my relationship with the Lord, it was very dependent on myself. And that really didn't take me anywhere positive. Um, I messed up a lot of relationships and I never really felt like the coping mechanisms that I was pursuing ever truly satisfied me. They were only temporary. Upon pursuing a relationship with the Lord, I finally found something that is satisfying, that's going to be lasting. And that was something that I've wanted for a long time. I'm glad I found it. Through the relationship I have with Christ, it's helped me to become a better friend. It's helped me to become a better father to my kids. It's helped me to become a better man. And I'm so thankful that I get to be a part of City Church Melissa. This place has been awesome to me ever since the very first Sunday that I walked in the doors. Um, this church is not just a church to go to, a big box church that you can step in the doors and sit in the back row and not ever get noticed. It's not just a church that you want to go to every Sunday just to check a box. I can honestly say going to this church, it challenges me. It challenges me to be a better Christian. I want to be baptized because I want the old self in me to be completely gone and I want to show everybody that I have a new life in Christ. I want the old to be dead and that I want to show everybody that moving forward, I have a relationship with the Lord and I want to uh, see where the Lord's plan is going to take me. Before I had kids, I always had this idea that I wanted my kids to look at me as some hero that did all these great wondrous things and I wanted them to put me on a pedestal and think of their father as you know, one of the best people in the world. As I am progressing through life and um, falling flat on my face and getting back up and continuing to move forward, building a relationship with the Lord, having kids, and what I really want my kids to know about me is that I'm, I'm a broken individual, I'm a, I'm a sinner, but because of Jesus, that He died on the cross for my sins, He's accepted me in His kingdom. And although I do mess up every day, I know where my foundation lies, and that's with a true relationship with Jesus Christ. I hope to share that with them on a daily basis. I hope to share that He is our, our Lord and Savior, that He has died on the cross for our sins so that we can live an eternal life in heaven. It's not always about being perfect in every single thing that you do because if you think you're going to do that, you're going to fall short. It's about being a real individual. It's about being honest with people. It's about not trying to impress others by works alone. It's about being genuine with others. It's about caring for others. It's about loving others the way Jesus loves us. My name is Jared, and I have been made new by Jesus. Bro. <laughs> hey, y'all, this is, this is Weston Bartlett, and uh, he's going to baptize Jared. Well, <clears throat> man, it's been fun, dude. It's been a fun year. <laughs> you know, one one thing that uh, I just want to say before we do this is just uh, it's it's never one sided. Uh, <laughs> 
proverb says, um, as iron sharpens iron, so does another man. And that's what's happened in my life this year. So thank you, brother. Thank you. So Jerry, because of your profession and the, your faith in Lord Jesus Christ, I get to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in death, raised to walk in new life. about our church. If you're new here, we planted this church. Coming up in a couple of weeks will be our seven-year anniversary. And Weston was building a house when we planted this church. And he spent a lot of time on his house, and he didn't really want to come to church much too often. He was really worried about himself. I'm sharing Weston's testimony for him. He would say this, <laughs> so I'm not picking on him. He said he shared this with our church many times. Because there were other things in his life that he valued more than Jesus, is what he says. He says it all the time. And Jesus moved in his life and convinced him that Jesus was more valuable than anything. And Weston and his wife Miranda and their two kids over the last number of years have been two of the most faithful followers of Jesus that I know. So then to see him bring his friend to church and be a discipler. He didn't ask me or Matt or somebody else to take care of Jared. He took care of Jared. And he discipled him. And he led him and pointed him to Christ. And Jared is now discipling my son every Wednesday night in student ministry. And Weston's been discipling my older son who's about to graduate. And so we see the reason we planted this church is we wanted the kingdom of God to be here on earth as it is in heaven. We wanted God to do big things in this community. And so those stories and all of the stories that followed it are just a picture of what God is doing here and his faithfulness to us. And so we rejoice. And if you're a guest with us, thank you for being here. I know we don't usually go till noon, but we would go longer if, if there were more to baptize today. I'll just tell you. What an amazing day it is. And so, as we close, I'm not going to come back up again. I want to thank you for being here, Overflow Room. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for sticking it out over there. It's, the rain looks like it might be here. Maybe it's going to hold off. You might get out of the parking lot without getting too money. But we're not going to leave until we all stand together and we respond in worship of Jesus for his great and mighty name and all that he has done in our church. Let's sing.
much for being with us today. Have a great Sunday.